Greetings and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me once again. Well today we're going to have something a bit more modern, a bit more up to date. So one or two people that have enjoyed the uh, the recent Matchbox uh, classic kits and by the way the amount of feedback I've had is absolutely incredible. I've never experienced this before. I'm getting about 30 plus 40 comments a day so and it's it's very supportive and it's people really enjoying it and sharing their stories as well with me um, about maybe they made these models and different memories they've had. It's quite interesting because it's striking how some, some of the stories are very similar to my own really. But anyway, so um, one thing that was commented on by one or two people is I didn't do a lot of Pacific Theatre aircraft. Uh, so we're going to correct that today. We've got the ultimate Pacific Theatre aircraft. No, nope, not the Zero, that would be too predictable. The Corsair, the F4U. 1A Corsair from Tamiya, so it's kit number 60325 and we're going to do a proper review on this. But before we get into it, a couple of bits of supplementary items that you probably find really interesting to get yourself if you've got this kit or if you're going to get one of these Corsairs from Tamiya. Obviously you can get the How to Build book, that's always essential. We'll put that one down there. And we've also got a Military Illustrated Modeler magazine with Bent Bird in it. If we just find the right page, there we go. Here we are, which has got some great tips of uh, how to build the kit, various things to watch out for, how to upgrade some of the wiring around the engine uh, and also in the uh, interior of the cockpit area as well. Some really good advice there uh, and also various tips about how to paint it, how to get that chromate, chromate green yellow look. Uh, and uh, you know, t getting the weathering just right is quite important. So that's a useful one. Uh, by the way, that was the November, November 2015. And then right up today, and this is perfect timing for this uh, review, we've got the uh, February edition from 2021 of the Tamiya Model Magazine. And it's all about Whispering Death, this very kit in the Pacific with a dioram dioramatic setting. It's a very dramatic setting as well. Look at this. This is absolutely superb and it's a chap from the Far East who's done the most beautiful diorama I've ever seen really. It's definitely up there with the very very best you'll ever see. It's got these um, ultracast resin 132 scale crew uh, figures and it's the Whistling Death from the Black Sheep Squadron. Now this is the uh, US Marines Fighter Squadron 214 which was the known as the Black Sheep because they were uh, Bit of a bunch of renegades and led, led by a very renegade man, a chap called Gregory or Pappy Boynton, uh, who was a colonel and became major at the end of the war. Uh, and actually got shot down. He, he was um, going to be the highest scoring ace of the war, but he got shot down chasing after the elusive last couple of kills he needed. Uh, unfortunately, he got taken prisoner by the Japanese, but he survived and he came out and he got the Medal of Honor, uh, the Congressional Medal of Honor, the uh, uh, unit citation, but, but they got all these awards. He was really highly decorated by FDR and by Truman. He actually got his Medal of Honor pinned on him by President Truman at the end of the war, uh, just after actually, in, uh, I think it was October '45. Now here we got. I'll zoom in. Here we've got some of these uh, close. We have the uh, some of these figures I've just alluded to from Ultra Cats, and there is Pappy Boynton on the right, uh, and it's a really good likeness. I've got to see from the photographs I've seen. It's almost. Fo you know, photographic of quality. And then you've got these uh, very toned, muscly uh, chaps who are the ground crew uh, in their sort of tropical gear. And it's also talking about how to build palm trees and it's got some amazing tips. Uh, they use the 35th scale Willis Jeep, sort of cheating a little bit and get away with it. And this is the guy um, who was the uh, author of this chap called uh, Jason Hissell. Uh, here he is getting his award at the Taipei uh, World International Model Sh Reality Fantasy Model Show 2020. Uh, and he won first prize and got the gold medal as champion. It's no wonder because it's just, I mean, just look at that. He looks like a photo from World War II. Astonishing piece of uh, model building. And, you know, here you've got some images where you've got the motor going and so on and so forth. So anyway, so that's the February edition of the Tamiya Model Magazine with Whistling Death. The... F4UA Corsair. So let's have a look at what we've actually got in the box. Before we open it, I'm quickly on the side. We've got Puppy Boynton's 214 Squadron here, and that's his aircraft, in fact. Bringing a bit closer. 
And we've also got <coughs> this um, second aircraft, which is from the VF-17 at Ondonga Airfield, uh, which is about around at the same time, late 1943. Um, we've got this, um, I'm not sure about this, it's got one of these clear cowling parts, which Tammy and I do as this export version. Not sure about that, really. Put my cup of tea, to be honest, in clear cowlings, but... Um, Beautifully detailed engine, it's the Wasp engine of course in this one, uh, and you've got a fantastic interior on the, ca uh, the cockpit area underneath the canopy, and then we've got uh, a finished example here, plus you've got, it's not Pappy Boynton perhaps, but uh, certainly a heroic US Marine uh, air pilot, and also showing you the uh, photo etch and the masking sets that all come with the kit. So let's have a look we'll go inside. Now I should just warn you with this one that I've got a few extras in here and they'll become the reasons for that become quite obvious really. So we'll just pop the top off and crack into it. This is going to be a real treat I think. Yes we've got a few extras now. We've actually debagged the uh, instructions etc. The first extra we got, well this is the standard uh, Tamiyar decals. Now I've had a lot of problems with them recently, Tamiyar decals. I mean they look, they always look beautiful, they look really sharp and crisp and nice colours, very accurate, but the bigger ones especially are a nightmare and something like this I had on the Mustang and the Spitfire 132 as well and I had terrible problems with them and in the end I went to to get some alternatives from Tech Mod and I've done exactly the same thing here. So I've got a set from Tech Mod, uh, it's actually number 32008 uh, and it's really the stars and bars because the trouble is with the Tamiya ones, they're so thick and so rigid They just don't conform well and I found the Tetanod ones were really good So got myself some extras there so that'll help me along I'll Pop those to one side. There's also um, from Tamiya standard they have got the um, Standard canopy masking set so that's good, but of course yet again you've got to cut them out yourself Not a major issue. I mean I did it on the Spitfire to be honest just for the sake of convenience rather than buying some extras and they, they work beautifully but it's just a little bit of extra labour. Uh, these two here, silver and black, are the stand uh, placards that go on the stand because of course you get a stand with this as well. So that is that. Also extras I got was the Barracuda, again decals, so it's the stencils and placards that go. And there aren't too many on this plane actually, probably less than you'd expect. Uh, but it tells you where they all go and those are going to go on nice and easy as well. Other extras we have, the inevitable, ah well there you go, I, I forgot that I actually bought uh, an Edward set canopy mask, so I don't think I'm going to have any trouble really. So I've got an extra set of pre-cut masks. And last but not least we have got here a rather nifty set of brassin resin uh, diamond wheels with diamond pattern on the tyres. And they're really nice these are, I have to say. As soon as I saw them I thought, yeah, that's something you've definitely got to get. Quite striking, beautifully moulded, and yeah, it's either that or you go, uh, with the standard kit, you get uh, a couple of these rather old school rubber tyres and they're not very nice and they never, the tread never looks right and you've got to take the seam out and can't be bothered about really. So, Right, let's have a look at the instructions first. Um, what I'm going to do today, um, I'm going to try and make this not too long because sometimes I know I get a bit, yeah, I get into the detail. But I think to make it quicker, what we'll do is what, once I've shown the instructions and the uh, colour cutouts, I'm going to go for an overhead shot and actually show you the sprues overhead style because I think you'll see, I won't have to keep moving around and then you can just see the entire sprue very very quickly and clearly and if you want to freeze frame it to look at any particular part you can never stop the video with a pause. You know. Sure, let us see. So we've got one, two, three additional items, one being the very, very thick, seriously thick instructions on this one. That is, it feels like a book, well, it's sort of like a magazine, you know, it's not not your usual flimsy instructions. So what I'm going to do, just bear with me one second, and I'm going to flip these items around. And we will have a bit more room. Pop that down there. And we'll get into the, into the, the meat and potatoes of it. Right. First of all, as you get with a lot of these tamiyas, you get this lovely um, 
information sort of stroke historical sheet data sheet in colour and comes with a lot of diagrams and really good photographs. This is where I think Tammy are really scoring, you know. Especially when you consider that compare them to people like um, Great Wall Hobby whose kits, let's be honest. If any of you have looked at a Great Wall Hobby kit recently, the quality of those is really, really good. I mean, beautiful. But this is where they're not in the same league. These additional bits of data, the colour call-outs, the photographs and historical references that tell me I do on another level, I'm afraid. So let's have a closer look at this. So on the front we've got a nice uh, period photographs with different versions of the aircraft talking about the development of it, how it came to be, prototypes, the main areas in which uh, here we're talking about the Battle of the Solomon Islands which uh, this aircraft was heavily involved in, especially with our, our friend in 214 Squadron, Pappy Boynton. Um, he was quite a character by the way, he was quite a hard drinking sort of fighting, hard living sort of character larger than life sort of all action here a bit, a bit of a John Wayne sort of character you might say <laughs> and the fighting sea bees anyway talks about the back, bit of the history then it shows about the various developments in all the models of the Corsair as time goes on you know developments with the canopy uh, different sort of styles of uh, trim radio aerial wing loading uh, different armour and uh, hard points that they, they started to fit on the aircraft as you went right through the war and of course it was used in the Korean War as well and here we get the actual, this is really good I think we get the actual model history in some detail showing you the differences and the key elements that were changed between each one so you can see the way it develops and slightly changes its shape and you can see also if you look at that first one how the cockpit moves back relative to the rest of the aircraft it seems to move further and further back as time goes on and when you get to the F4U7, which is the Korean War one, it's yeah, it's it's moved right back. So yeah, quite a lot of developments in the aerodynamics and the way that they positioned the engine and got the centre of gravity right. Full detail on the different types of canopies, the wing where the wings fold. Talks about the WASP engine here and the different types of propeller, different types of armament, different types of. Uh, the way the wheels retract here and then we've got some photos of the aircraft on carriers and some nice sort of detailed close-ups of the instrumentation in the cockpit now be a bit careful with these ones from Tamiya they are notorious for phot photographing museum pieces which sometimes have been messed about with and become a bit of a Frankenstein type plane where they've had bits added that were not necessarily 100% accurate. I'm not saying these are wrong, uh, but just do your own research just to double check if there's any particular detail areas you might be wanting to enhance or change. Make sure you've checked that it's right first and don't rely on these photos 100%. But it does give you some great close-ups, things like the uh, the exhausts there and you know the, the weapons in the, the guns in the wing, you can see them there. Uh, yeah. 50 cal isn't it on this, 650 cal, very very impressive looking aircraft and such a, an iconic plane with the you know the ghoul wing that it's got and uh, made this amazing noise this wasp engine of course which is why they called it whistling death it used to just have this whistle scream when it came down at high speed so you've got the hard points you've got all sorts of in intakes radiators shows the weapons absolutely brilliant that is fantastic uh, and I do wish that our friends in you know places like well, Airfix really, but um, okay, Airfix are a bit cheaper, so perhaps we're, perhaps I've been harsh expecting them to provide that. But there are others that are charging a great deal of money, you know. I mean, Italia area with that tornado they brought out, 130 pound, nothing like that in it really. No, so that's a bit of a shame. Moving up, we've got the call out sheet it's just one side this time because um yeah so basically it's navy blue intermediate blue and insignia white the usual thing really very straightforward um but of course the beauty of these naval uh, marine aircraft you can really weather the hell out of them if you want to because they were often in a bit of a shabby state as we saw with that competition winning example in the Tamiya mag and it shows you basically here your uh, some of the stencils detail is included 
and just gives you a good idea what it should look like at the end. And uh, it's a very striking play, isn't it? No question about that. So, instructions. Let's go. I'm going to rattle through this as quickly as I can because it's big and we don't want to get too bogged down. We want to get into the actual plastic. So, let's get going. Now then. But I'll tell you what I'll do, I think I'll change the camera position uh, immediately because it's probably going to be easier all round. So if you would just bear with me and give me your patience for a few seconds, I'll put you in an over position and we'll rattle through it right now. So, back over there. And we will move the camera. This is quite tricky because we have a, a slightly unusual tripod set up here. And to get this to work, I've got to do some magic. So, whoops, that was not the magic. That was a, an error. <laughs> Bear with me. Now then, we're going to put the camera in a position so that it, it is over there. Over like so. And then we just gotta lock it in place. So how are we doing? Quick look at what we've got. There they this is a lot doing this at speed is not easy, I've got to say. Right. Now then. How's that looking? Not too bad, is it? So I think we'll have a little assistance in the light department. Better. Um, maybe. So excuse my arm for a second. One more. There we go. Right now then, that's better, isn't it? So, so again, a little bit of right at the front. It gives you a little bit of background here, which is uh, in supplement to what we've already seen. Basic Tamiyar details about paint ranges and things. One or two bits of tips, and then we're into how to do the masking, what paints to use, and your marking options. So. Three different options there. Squadron 214, Pappy Boynton's plane, the 883, and you've got the VF 17 squadron leader or the VF 111 with a lot of kills. A lot of kills. Now, Pappy Boynton, I think, had 28 at the end when he was shot down. He was on his 28th uh, kill. So, into the actual construction then. What have we got? Building up your cockpit interior. So, you've got your consoles, you're in all your instrumentation. Then we've got, it's like a wrap around style, isn't it? This uh, uh, instrumentation and console area. Um, so it's like a Formula One car, isn't it? It's like a monocoque around the pilot. Then we've got a forward bulkhead to which you mount this console, put in rudder pedals. And then we got uh, the foot plates and manual hydraulic pump, I guess that's for the uh, undercarriage. Foot plates going in and being mounted into the uh, front bulkhead. Instrument panel. And the, this is the Tamiyar one where it has this um, decal that comes through from the back. And it's actually surprisingly effective. It looks really weird and people think, oh, it's not going to work. But it does. It's really good. So don't worry about that. Um, you've got harnesses. Uh, that's the one thing I think I should have probably got. I might change that. I might get some HGW ones because these are photo etched, but they never quite look right. They always look a bit too rigid, don't they? Moving on. Building up your seat. Uh, you've got a closed canopy option here. Attaching your seat harness if the canopy is closed and there's no pilot on board. So you've got to bear in mind and make that choice early on. Then you've got your thumb, uh, rear bulkhead, I should say. And then you're going to attach the seat to that rear bulkhead and put your pilot in. It shows you where to put the pilot in if you have him. Uh, that's not actually showed you putting the pilot together yet, so he comes later. Then we've got the coving, uh, the sort of little binnacle on the top there, uh, right in front of the instruments where the gun side goes. And then you've got your control stick and you're bringing in the front and rear bulkheads together with the console and the instrumentation section all into one. Tail section has got its own little bulkhead 
And of course this is to strengthen the aircraft for its uh, landing on the carrier with its hook down. Then you're going to build uh, a little bit more in the, there's a complete interior into this so there's a lot of detail there actually, which is quite good. There's a, there's a lot of work in this one, this is not going to be the work of a few weeks, I think it's going to take a little while. Uh, then we've got your right side of the fuselage and then fitting in the left side and as you're going along you're putting in all these various controls, uh, instruments, um, levers etc. And then of course finally you're bringing it together the two sides having done all that with your cockpit uh, interior and pilot if you have him in all in one. Now it just show you there doesn't it? It's got, you're assembling the pilot you're now putting his arms on. So yeah it didn't really uh, it just said pilot a figure, so I guess he comes, it does come in one piece because it didn't show him being assembled, which I thought was rather odd. Anyway, then you've got your exhaust going on. Now, from memory, we'll look on the plastic, but I'm not sure that they were drilled, so you might have to just drill them out to get the the hollow look. Then you're going to put, uh, this is, and you build it into the exhaust sort of uh, bulkhead that goes around the back of the engine. Then you're going <coughs> to attach these panels onto the fuselage, one or two holes to drill. And then we have obviously this uh, forward section um, where the exhausts are and the, uh, the sort of fuselage front cover and outer panels on the top. Then we've got your side cylinders, um, front side cylinders, you've got front side cylinders and rear side cylinders. It's like a, a double stack cylinders that overlap them with each other. It's, it's a remarkable engine this, it develops a lot of power, I think it developed about 1500 horsepower. Um, I'll have a look at that in a second. So then you've got your magnetos, generators as they call them. Uh, the reduction gearbox here. And then you've got your more exhaust, front part of the exhaust pipes going into the cylinders. It looks great doesn't it, there's so much detail, it's absolutely fantastic. Then we have got the rear side cylinders, so this is the second bank of cylinders that's behind. And you've got some, uh, looks like the uh, push rods going in there too. And then you're mounting all this together uh, with the exhausts, again, exhausts going into the, the rear side. And then you've got cylinder head covers. And then you get your front cowling. Uh, and the flaps for the cowling. So there's quite some quite intricate work here. It's gonna it's gonna take some time. I think. It looks beautiful actually. If the plastic's as good as this looks, it would be amazing. Um, open cow flaps. Obviously, you've got open or closed choices here. And if you're going to have them open, that's what you're going to have to set it up as. So you've got to, again another choice. You have to think carefully about that. And then we've got the actual engine motor itself uh, going in and being attached to those exhaust pipes uh, and being socketed into the actual main fuselage and then you've got these opening cowls that you can have great but a bit like the diorama we saw you can have some of these left open they'll look really good if you do but, because it's a shame to cover that engine up isn't it beautiful but then we've got building into your horizontal stabilizers and your elevators uh, and these are coming with like, um, I think it's photo etch, is it? I think it is. Well, maybe not, maybe not, it's plastic, but it's, um, it's to give a very positive, clear location point into the actual, uh, for the actual elevators going into the horizontal stabiliser. You can have them in the down position, or you can have them in the up position. Again, more choices to make. Uh, showing it going in there, suck it in, I'm sure they'll be a beautiful fit to be honest. Then you've got to decide whether you want to have your gear down or you're going to have it uh, select retracted landing gears when depicting the plane in flight. So it's just, it's just saying do you want them down or up. I'm not sure in this kit whether you're going to have the choice like you did in the, the Spitfire and the Mustang where you can actually change it back. I'm not sure with this design if that will be possible but we'll see shortly. And then you get your tail wheel and your hook going in for the carrier landings. And again, there are, there are different versions with different types of tail wheel, so again, you've got to be very careful.
to make sure you choose the right one. And this is where we have this A, B system where it says A or B in the different versions. So just be sure to pay attention to these because that tells you which one you're building. And then finally it's just the the actual, if the plane's in flight, the retracted version where the uh, the rear tail wheel is half disappeared, it's sort of semi retracted And then you've got to decide whether you want to have extended wings or whether you're going to have them folded. Now this is where it gets a little bit uh, more complicated because you've got to make, again, big choices to make here up front. We're now going to read the instructions for the extended wings. So you're building up um, some of the interior of the uh, the intakes and the gear uh, wing roots and the gear bay interiors. We've got the main beam spar here, which looks very good. Then you've got um, the bay walls for the, uh, the landing gear bays. And again, as you're going along in this kit, you've got choice after choice, and you've got to make those choices and then follow the instructions very carefully. If I'm honest, I'm a bit of a rusher at things like this, and sometimes I don't always read it quite as carefully as I think I have <laughs> and get into trouble. So try not to do what I do and make sure you thoroughly study it first. Don't rush in because you'll probably end up building it all back to front and it won't it won't work. Then you've got your main spar going in. Obviously that you can see how the it looks as though they're retractable, but of course they're not, but it's just the way it looks because of the rhythm. That's the way it appeared on the real aircraft. And then you've got these uh, further walls for attaching the the landing gear bay walls in to make it look totally authentic. And then you're putting those various uh, doors in, actuators are going in, uh, wing root surface detail, and then you're actually building your two halves of your inner wing, inboard section of the wing. Uh, which is the anhedral, the downward pointing section of the wing, plus intakes. Over here we've got, see a bit more. Over here we've then got the underside parts going on, and you've got your flap rods um, for the flaps, actually, and quite a few of those to work on. And then you attach the wing root, and it clicks into the actual fuse line. Then we're actually on to the main landing gear, which of course on this aircraft is very beefy indeed because it has to land on a carrier, so it's quite a strong arrangement. And it um, has this twist and turn thing, doesn't it? I think on the course there it's an unusual, not straightforward. It flips through sort of 90 degrees as it retracts. There we go. So you get your tyres going in, this is obviously where the um, the resin parts would replace that because they are the alternative. And then we've got the uh, the main landing gear legs themselves going together and you bring the wheels, tyres and gear all in together, putting it in place there, either uh, installing it extended or retracted. And then you've got your covers going on for the, the doors. And then we get all, these, all, all the little flaps, it was quite complicated. Lots of flaps and little pieces going on, there's a lot of work here. A lot of work, but I bet it's going to be fun. Because you know these parts are going to go together beautifully, so it's a given really. Then we have the wing root flaps. So you've got several flaps and they sort of petal out, like it's almost like the petals of a flower sort of star. Uh, and if you've got the, wing, uh, the flaps down, it shows you that's the position they're in. If you want them up, then they're in those, that configuration there. Okay. Then you're doing your masking of your canopy. Get that masked up inside and out. Get that painted. And then you build up your wings, outer wing sections. Outer wing, you've got all these positions and in, in the inner bay um, walls for the flaps, etc. And you've got to uh, put your ailerons together as well. Again, decide whether you want those flaps up or down. And then we're 
attaching the ailerons onto the end of the wing and you know, so we're just putting the final bits like the lights in and uh, the outer flaps. There's lots of different pieces of flaps, it's like multiple sections. One, two, three, four. I think there's four. Two, three. One, two, three, four, I think, per side. And then you've got uh, the final assembly where you bring that outer wing onto the spar, which looks very realistic actually, like the real aircraft. Slide it onto the spar and you then have your completed wing. And then you move on to the vertical stabiliser, the fin. And then, popping your canopy on, tail goes on. Uh, aerial uh, spinner, and of course we don't. We, sorry, we don't have a spinner as such. It's just more, more of a cap on this, but uh, we'll call it a spinner anyway. And propeller, and then you pop that into your engine motor at the front, and your two cannons go, and that's it. But if you have the folded wings, uh, uh, then we have a completely different set of instructions. So it's, it's, it's the same process, but it's just with completely different parts. So obviously you see here that they are in the folded position, which looks very dramatic, doesn't it? Uh, and quite striking, it has to be said. So, the same, same process, we're sort of repeating here, going through, but obviously the wings are going to be in that folded up position. And again, the same details on the uh, undercarriage. I'm not sure why they've actually done the instructions in the way they have, because I'm not sure you needed to see the undercarriage being shown, because I'm sure that's going to be the same. I don't think there's any variation. Nor is there much variation, I think, in the things like the tips of the wings either, but anyway. Ultimately, it comes to this point, which is the interesting part, where you see the actual folded position wings coming in, with the spar obviously pointing up this time, because it's in a folded configuration. Uh, and then you see the little support stays here. Uh, and the actuators, they're visible. Uh, you know, the t I mean, things like the tail, that's just a repeat, so I don't know why they're doing it twice, really. The folded wings bit, they should have just done as, as just the wings, but anyway. Coming, coming up to the end, and we get to the, the business end now. So this is the, um, the weapons, the drop tanks, or the bomb, central bomb that the plane can carry. And you've also got your pilot. I think there's going to be quite a good one in this. Also, how to construct the stand. Uh, it has this uh, quite a robust mounting into the aircraft, which is very similar to the Spitfire and the Mustang, and I can strongly recommend it. And then at the end, you've just got all your obviously it's your sprue tree map, and then stencils. And you've got to watch out for the stencils because it's not an exclusive map of the stencils, as I found out with the recent Spitfire in 48th, where they put some of them on this stencil guide here, and then they put some others elsewhere, which is plumbing crazy, to be honest. <laughs> However, there we go. So it shows you the paint colours, all the call-outs are there, shows the different versions of the different markings. Got Pappy Pointing on this one. And that's kind of it, really. So, let's have a look at the plastic, see what we got. It's, it's a big instruction manual, is that? That's quite. Yeah, I think they made it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, if I'm honest. But anyway, so let's have a look what we've actually got in terms of plastic. This is where you're going to see it properly this time. So, first of all, what we got? This is sprue C, and on this one we've got the, uh, mainly the the various uh, tail sections. We've got. Um, the all those flaps we've just been talking about and the ailerons, so it's playing the control surfaces. They look nicely moulded. I mean that's, that's a given, isn't it, with Tamiya? And while we for ejector pins there, Any ejector pins uh, where we don't want them. I don't think there's any problems here, is there? I think it may come later that. So let's put that one away. That looks very nice. Not an issue that I can see there. One. Now the wings. So I've got to look at these. Right. Now if we look, yeah, look at the detail on this. Oh, it's very, very nice. I'm so close here, my camera is struggling to focus, so I'm actually going to 
I'm going to come up and away a little bit to give us a bit better focus. Mm. How's that? Is that okay? Yeah, I think we can see that nicely, can't we? So, look at the fine riveting detail here. That really is very, very nice. Yeah. I'm actually going to, I'm going to make it go a little bit further away because I think we'll get a bit better zoom if we do. How's that? That's it. There we go. Yeah, some beautiful, beautiful parts. Look at the moulding quality here. It's it's got this sort of a matty, sort of satiny finish to it. it. Looks absolutely stunning. I mean, the panel detail here is absolutely amazing. Just gorgeous. Yep, that's very nice. Can't see anything wrong with that. Well, now we're onto the spars. I think this is the spars for extended wings. There we go. Let's try and zoom you out a bit. Trouble with my zoom, sorry about that. Now then, how's that looking? So actually I was wrong, it's got both the spars, the straight extended spar, all the folded wing spars here. And these are all the actuators and the hydraulic arms, uh, the, the locking arms that lock it in position. That does look very, very nice. Yeah. I don't think the ejector pins that we can see are in a problem position, so I think, I think that's an improvement over the Mosquito. Next one, <clears throat> next one we got is the cowls at the front for the engine. Now then, now then, now then, now then, now then. Again, look at the panel detail on this. That is remarkably good. Yeah, very, very nice. Can't see anything wrong with it. Yep, looks fine to me. There's this typical, um, very, very high quality Tamiyar plastic. It's very, very hard. It's quite. Uh, when you cut it, it's, it cuts very, very cleanly. So this is this area um, around the tail wheel. And we've got the coving in front of the cockpit and we've got the instrumentation. Instrument panel there. And pedals. <laughs> That's quite good, isn't it? Really nice. It's pretty stunning, I've got to be honest, it's um, it's hard to fault it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Um, I'm not actually going to open this, but we, we talked before, we just saw those... Um, <laughs> we saw the uh, panels that would go around the cowling, and this is the clear option version. I'm not sure why they choose to do this, you know, they basically say here, look, apply a thick coat of TS-13 to both inside and outside surfaces to enhance their transparency. Because it's like a frosted plastic, and the idea is when you spray a clear coat on it, it goes very glossy and it becomes very transparent. Uh, why they don't just make it transparent in the first place, and not too clear, but anyway, that's that one and that one. Next we have got the engine, and for this one, now 
now then. Oh, that's nice. That's very, very nice. Some beautiful moulding here. This is kind of wing up, wing standard, I think. Yeah, people complain about Tamiya it's soft, and even I've said that in the past, but this is pretty nice. Now you've got these, um, you've got these exhaust parts here. I'm just going to zoom out slightly. But the problem with them is they are hollowed out, but they're not, not very much. So you might, a bit of slide moulding's gone on there, but you might want to do a bit more in terms of drilling them, just to add to the realism. But things considered, it's a pretty nice sprue. Then we have got our heroic marine pilot. Just put that over there and zoom in for this one. Now then, so you've got a standing pilot on this side. And the actual sitting pilot here. I've got to say that looks, yeah, it's pretty nice. Let's just have a look at his face in the detail. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's really that's much better than the one that was in the Spitfire, for example, which was not a great pilot, if we're being completely honest. Yeah. You know, um, to, to be honest, both versions of that look really nice. Then we have lots and lots of these parts for the uh, undercarriage legs, etc. And here we can see there's quite a lot of uh, the struts from the legs themselves. Um, and we've got the tail wheel itself as well there. So that's very sharp. Really nice looking parts these. They don't seem to be suffering with the injector pins in silly places as much as we have been perhaps used to in the not too distant past. That's really quite a nice spree. And you see this, you've got the arrestor hook here different versions, arrest a hook for the carry landing. And then we're going to have a look at the main spar and some of these these panels that we talked about earlier. Look at that. Now that is nice isn't it? Um, one or two sink marks I'm just noticing, and that, that main spar area. Not, not bad, but just slight blemishes in the plastic, which I can, I can make out just here. There is it there, there and there. But overall, the finish is so nice, it's got this beautiful riveted detail, and you can just about if you can see it on the camera, but yeah, look at that. Mm. It's very, very nice, isn't it? You've got one of the panels here, body panel. Looks pretty good. And then we're actually going to have the fuselage itself. And this is going to be a fairly critical one, so we'll have a good look at this. Put that over there. Here we go. Now then. That does look nice, actually. Can't see any actual flaws in it. It's not got, it's not got any of the little sort of glitches in the moulding that we had in the Mosquito which had a bit of a, uh, a sink mark if you remember in the middle of the uh, fuselage can't see anything like that here and then on the flip side now mm, we have got some ejector pins haven't we 
That's his Tammy R's want. You can clearly see, just zoom back a fraction, see an ejector pin mark here. See it? That's annoying. And then you've also got them along, Ooh, you've got quite a few here, several of them here, which is kind of uh, frustrating. Yeah, they're very clear on the camera, aren't they? You can see them better than I can. And there's a host of them here as well, so there's a whole row of them. Which is a little bit... I mean, that, that area is probably not critical, but this one, you could see that. I think you could see that at certain angles, you know. Not easily, because it's recessed, but... The, the trouble with time, you know, is that when they do these ejector pins, they, suddenly, they just suddenly go nuts with them. And you can see more here, look. Here, and here. Can we see that? They're just a bit too much for the focus to... Yeah, there we go. Now then, see that there? Yeah. The side, same. Hmm. It's a bit frustrating. Anyway, they're not overly, you know, excessive ones or overly obvious, but uh, I think that people complain about them because a lot of other manufacturers now, like people like Great Wall Hobby, and, well, Wing and Wings used to not have a problem with them, they used to get away without it. So I'm not sure why Tammy are, are still struggling with that. Have, you've got to bear in mind, of course, that this kit was made, it came out about three or four years ago now, so it isn't actually new. So maybe I shouldn't be too harsh. Then we've got something interesting here, we've got the um, this is the underside, obviously, of the, uh, the centre fuselage and the inboard of the wings. I'm struggling to get into these packets, so bear with me a moment. There we go. Oof, now that's nice. That is beautiful. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that one. But I can tell you. Uh, we've also got a nice top cowl here. This is like a double skin, very nicely done. This is slide moulded to look like it's a... Oh no it's not, no, it's actually two pi... Is it two parts? Yes, it's actually two parts. I thought it was... <laughs> I thought this was one part, it's actually two, look. If, you... if I gently work them apart, it's an upper and a lower. It's just the way they've done it, it looked like it was one part with a double skin. Oh, look at this. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice. Look at that. Oh, look at the fit on that. That's gorgeous. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah, they've, they've hit the mark there. Definitely. I shall pop that back in. It's a little bag. I think I better put it back how it was, otherwise I'll have problems. So it sort of slots in like this, look, like a socket, it goes straight through. That is quite impressive, the way they've thought it out. It's got like a socket at the top, a socket at the bottom. They just sit together like that. <laughs> Clever. Okay. Now then, what have we got left? Uh, well, I won't bother with opening this out of its bag, but this is the stand, obviously, uh, which is... Uh, they are very good, actually. They're very strong, and they, uh, they do support the model very well, so that's good. And then we have clear parts, and so we'll be careful with these. Very, very careful. Have a good look at these without putting it on the desk too much. Oh yes, now that's what you'd expect with Tamiya. That's perfection. There's no distortion. No. Perfect. Very, very sharp and clear. Love the instruments. Got your um, <coughs> armoured glass at the front here. Um, yeah, beautiful clear part. We'll pop them away quickly so we don't even dust all marks on them. That's quite critical for those. That was beautiful. Now then, what have we got here? We've got a 
couple of interesting sprues coming up in the first one. Uh, I've got the smaller parts now. And we have here, this is this console for the cockpit instrumentation. And you've got the, um, the mounting, um, the sort of sidewall effect, and then you've got the pilot seat here. And this is quite good the way that they've actually built, it's got the front and rear bulkhead as well. And they've built all this onto one sprue. Uh, you've got your fire extinguisher here, of course. And you've got a ferry pistol, flare pistol there. <laughs> That's really nice. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. That's really good, isn't it? Um, no eject pins? No, no, okay, for eject pins. Looks nice. Uh, is it me or is the pilot seat just look a bit small? It doesn't seem very big, does it? Such a, a meaty cockpit. Anyway, here on with that. Pop that one away like that. And then we've got... Got more. So, we've got the two, two the same, so it's the propeller blades, of course there are four, and we've got the elevators, top and bottom of the, uh, the left and right of the rudder, the top and bottom of the elevators, etc. And the wheels, if you were to use the kit ones, are here. Nicely moulded those. Can't see anything wrong with that. Looks good. He said that there's a sharpness there. The finish is like, you know that if you put a wash on this, it's going to be perfect. It'll just, it'll take a wash without any problem at all. That. And you'll really be able to do some weathering on it and really bring out the detail. As we saw with that diorama from the chap in, in Taiwan at the model show. He did a beautiful example, didn't he? Okay, so what does that leave us with? That just leaves us with drop tanks and bombs. I think that's the last sprue, in fact. So, let's have a look at that one. It's uh, looking pretty good. Let's get there on with that. It's, um, it's really nice. You've got your cockpit um, instrument panel here. You've got your mounting for your bomb here, bomb itself. Um, that's the fuel cap. And you've got your fuel drop tank, and then you've got your two optional tailwheel uh, covers, open or closed, depending on whether you gear up or down. That's uh, quite nice. And that appears to be that actually. So I'm just going to try and get these back in the bag very quickly if you'll bear with me a second otherwise we won't get to see the kit at the end. Right here we go very quickly then. Put that back in there. This is always the problem with these is getting them back in so you can see the box at the end. I'm going to uh, that one's going down there. Nice. I mean, I've got to be honest, it's it's a Rolls Royce kit, this. There's just nothing really that says, oh no, I'm disappointed at all. Apart from those decals, that's all. A little bit, a bit nightmarish, aren't they? Right. Let's go back in there. Oh, I'll tell you what I didn't mention. We've obviously got some little screwdrivers and other small parts. I'm just going to put that back in here so you can have a look at this one while I'm playing with my bags. Trying to get them back in for you. Right. So there's also some photo etch which we're going to have a quick look at. And we have got a 
We've got a few bags there that are never going to go in inside. So I'm just going to shunt them all in for you. And I'm going to show you the photo etch as it comes. There we go. Now, I'll to move this on out of the way. So here's our photo etch set, which is quite... Actually, this, is, this does remind me of the decals with Tamiya, because the photo etch is a bit thick. And it's not the easiest to bend, if we're honest. You, you definitely need the sort of pliers and tools. Because without it, you might well struggle. And then, we're almost done. Put those over there. I'm going to pop that lid on, like so. And say, it's time to summarise what we think of it. What do we think of this kit? So just bear with me a tick while it comes down. That'll make you feel a bit queasy. And we're going to come back like so. And we will get ourselves back to normal photography. You just bear with me one second. As we come back across the room. This is not as easy as it seems. We'll get on TV. <laughs> right. There we go. Right then. Yeah, I know it's a bit. I haven't got an overhead camera, you know, mounting, so that's why we have this. Um, that's why we have this bit of a difficulty. So I'm just going to give you a little bit more. Angle you down. You're a bit too high there. There we go. That's better. So, I think it's better for you to see it that way. When it's a, such a big kit with so many sprues, it's a nightmare trying to hold them up and the focus hunt. At least this way you get to see those parts very, very clearly. And uh, I'm still trying to get my, my light to work, the light's fading. <laughs> um, but doing it that way does enable you to see it properly. Um, and you get to see a lot more detail than you would if I was just trying to hold this up, you know, and we'd be here all day. It's a lot quicker doing it that way. So apologies for the slightly, you know, the odd moment when you've got nothing on screen or the bumpy camera. But it was worth it in the end, wasn't it? So, what's the verdict then? It's 10 out of 10, isn't it? I mean, I literally, if, apart from the slightly uh, dodgy decals, obviously, that are too thick, and the same with the photo etch. Apart from that, it's absolutely flawless, to be honest. It's going to build into a beautiful kit. The only dilemma for me would be whether we go with folded wings or straight wings, gear up, gear down. I think I think the folded wings, you know, it, it might be more practical with the folded wings. I don't want to have it with folded wings, and yet it would look dramatic, and it will take up less room. So it's always something to think about. Anyway, Hope you enjoyed the show. Sorry if it was a little bit drawn out, but it's a massive kit with a lot of parts. I really think that that will be a joy to build. No question whatsoever. 10 out of 10. Literally a perfect 10 for me. Um, I think it's probably scored higher than the Mosquito did, so that's probably the highest score. I think. don't remember giving a 10 before. I think it's a 10 out of 10, yeah. You know, uh, there's no arguing. You, know, you might want to take half off for the as I say, the two parts that you can easily replace, and I've had to get some alternative decals from Tech Mod in this case, but there's lots of other. Beautiful kit. Absolutely, you'll, you'll enjoy every minute of it. It'll be like an engineering experience, and this is the pinnacle of model uh, construction in terms of manufacturing. Uh, we want to see more of this from Tamiya. I was a bit disappointed this year when they only came up with the Phantom in 48. I thought there'd be another 30 second scale kit. I think a lot of people thought that might happen. So it felt a little bit like, I know they've been tough for them, like all the manufacturers with this Covid thing, but yeah, I think a bit, a bit lacking in ambition and we haven't had a 30 second scale new one now for two or three years, have we? Uh, was this the last one? I'm trying to think. Uh, it was, wasn't it? Um, so we've had a, mm, it's a bit of time that they, they did another one. Anyway, there we are. Hope you enjoyed the show. Please give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please ding the subscription bell. And if you have subscribed, make sure you've clicked the notification bell to get an update every time we upload a new video. Uh, and then you'll not miss out and get no delay in seeing the latest that I've released. 
many many thanks for all the feedback and please give me genuinely really heartwarming and it's i enjoy reading people's own stories as much as they probably enjoy watching the vids so please keep the comments coming uh, if you've built one of these you get any input or any problems or anything i should know about please again put the comment underneath so i can get myself updated and other people can share in your experience as well that's it for now thanks very much for joining me i uh, hope you all stay safe and until next time thanks a lot and bye for now.